Hello, my name is Professor Dr. Bertagnoli. I'm uh, a pioneer in motion preservation technologies and the founder of the first European Center of Spine Arthroplasty and Associated Non Fusion Technologies. Today, I want to demonstrate you what it means to use motion preservation in treatment of spinal uh, pathologies. Before we start to uh, go more into details of motion preservation technologies, I want to demonstrate you a little bit about uh, the motion capability of the human spine and about biomechanics uh, of motion because I think that's important that you understand very well uh, what is, uh, why do we need uh, the function of the spine and why do we need motion spine. As uh, you know, we are uh, among the few beings on earth that, uh, that can use an upright position in a permanent manner. So we have developed a very complex uh, spinal posture. Uh, we, in the upright position, uh, we do need three different curvatures in different areas of the spine. In the upper area, what we call the cervical spine, we do need elodosis, followed by kyphosis uh, in the thoracic spine, and finally we end up in a lordotic position of the lumbar spine. The lumbar spine is something in the cervical spine that uh, motion preservation is very important, so I will uh, focus mainly on the lumbar and the cervical spine today. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this curvature and this posture is necessary to have a very balanced uh, position of the body. Uh, that means especially of the trunk uh, to uh, co compare to the lower limbs and uh, to the position of the head. Uh, if we do have this kind of curvatures, this balance, we have a posture that allows a minimal activity of our muscles. That means we save a lot of energy if we have that. Uh, the problem is, uh, why do we need these curvatures? Uh, these curvatures we need because uh, in the different positions uh, that we are using in our daily activities, uh, this is the upright position, this is the sitting position and the laying position and all the positions in between, of course. Uh, we are also changing not only the spine, we are changing also the limbs, the pelvis, and other parts of the body. And, especially if you look here, if I start to simulate the sitting position, we see in the sitting position, we are moving our lower limbs upwards, that means we are forcing the pelvis in a position, what we call retroversion, that means we move the posterior part of the pelvis downwards and we move the anterior part of the pelvis upwards. And immediately you see uh, the spine starts to adjust to this position of our uh, pelvis. That means the spine becomes flat, straight or even kyphotic, depending how much we pull our uh, lower limbs upwards. In the upright position again, we are moving our pelvis in the antiversion position. That means we are lifting the posterior part upwards and we are moving our anterior parts downwards and immediately we start to create a lordosis. So as you can see here, uh, this overall movement is happening because we have many small segments in the spine. Uh, similar to a chain, uh, we have uh, smallest motion units and the smallest motion unit in the spine is called the motion segment. In the lumbar spine, as you can see here, we have five vertebras, five discs, uh, so altogether five motion segments. 